Hi. In another one of my videos, I got a question asking how I learned to use VCV Rack, and that came with a comment on how the workflow was unnecessarily difficult. Well, I kind of understand that. I think what helps when working in a modular environment is finding the right modules that you connect with and find exciting to use. And the second is having a mindset of embracing what's unique about modular synthesis, because if you're trying to recreate some of the capabilities in Ableton, then you're probably going to find VCV Rack to be very tedious to use. So this will be a first video in a series I'd like to do to share some workflow tips on uh, VCV Rack. And today I think I'd like to share a few modules I found that I like to use to make drum loops and that may help accelerate your workflow. And I'll also share a couple tricks to help spice up your drum loops and make them a bit more interesting. So the main modules I have here to create these drum patterns are a, a clock, which I'm using Clocked by Impromptu, which is probably my favorite clock in uh, VCV Rack. Uh, a clock divider, which is very useful. And um, I have a topograph by Valley, which is a clone of the Mutable Instruments Grids module. So if I, if I call it Grids, that's why, because that's kind of how I think of it. Um, and then I have a Drum Player Plus from Sickazel, which is a drum sample player that I think pairs very nicely with Grids because it has a similar number of um, tracks on it. And it has a built-in accent feature, which pairs well with uh, the topograph module. Um, so the way to think about the topograph is it, it basically has a bunch of built-in drum patterns on it that you can kind of select with the X and Y that are like arranged in an X and Y plane that you can select with these knobs here and kind of um, seamlessly mutate between. And um, the drum patterns are kind of arranged in a way that make the most sense when you use one, two, and three as the kick, snare, and hi-hat, respectively. Um, you can, of course, use it to play like whatever fucked up samples you want, but uh, it'll make generally make the most sense if you use them that way if you want to make traditional drum grooves. So the easiest way to really get started with this is just take the, the trigger outputs here and just map them to the trigger inputs of uh, your drum sample player or whatever drum modules you, you like to, to use. And um, set your tempo with a knob here and just hit go. Um, it's of course not playing yet because um, these fill knobs here, basically they set the density of uh, the sample playback. So like the, how frequently each kick, uh, a kick, snare, or hi-hat gets played. So if I start to turn this up, then we start to hear the kick sample come in. When it's all the way counterclockwise, it means it's completely off. Um, so you won't hear any snare or hi-hats. Um, and if I turn it all the way to the right, it basically just plays it. Um, it fills out the drum pattern as densely as it can with that sample. <laughs> so it could be good for like fills or something, but it's not really what I'm looking for for a kick. So let me bring the snare. And the hat. So you see that's pretty easy. Um, and then if you don't like this groove, you just start twisting the X and Y uh, knobs and just start exploring what's built into grids. Yep. So I find like as you go more uh, clockwise <laughs> on these knobs, the pattern gets more gets more dense. But you can find some interesting, a number of interesting grooves, pretty quickly and easily with this module. Much more so than if you were to just program a drum machine yourself. And um, and you sometimes find grooves that you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't otherwise normally think of yourself, which is kind of which is kind of neat. And if you don't like what you're playing, or if you get bored with it, I mean, you just you just twist knobs until you find something you're happy with. <laughs> And if you're using the internal clock, um, you can add swing to the pattern. You hear the swing groove on the hi-hat there, which is kind of neat. I'll turn that off. 
Um, you can run this with an external clock. You have to have this the the tempo knob turned all the way counterclockwise for that to work. But um, it uh, it works perfectly fine with its own clock as long as you're not trying to sync it up with other modules, of course. But you notice, like, if you leave kind of it running as it is, the, the pattern is pretty static. I mean, it, there's no fills or anything, and it's um, it can get boring pretty quickly. Um, of course, you can just, like, constantly keep turning knobs to try to keep, um, keep it interesting and make it sound more alive. But uh, there's other ways that we can use different modules to tie into this to make the sound uh, a bit more interesting. So... Um, let me turn this off for a second, and then the first thing I'm going to look at is um, uh, let me let me turn it back on. First, I'll just um, wire in the accents. So I'll add the accent outputs on one, two, and three to the accent inputs on uh, my Drum Player Plus module here. So you'll see, like, on some of these um, drone triggers here, some of them come with accents, which you can use to um, within this module just to make the sample playback louder on the accented steps. And you can set the up the accent settings here. So it uh, adds to the groove a little bit without having to do much of anything. If you get really creative, you can use these accents to trigger other things. If you have other tracks playing, like you can use it to uh, um, like trigger an envelope to use to have the bass line duck the kick drum, for example, or you can use it to open up the filter, an accent to open up the filter momentarily on a bass line or something. And things can get really interesting. Um, and that's that's why I like the accent features on, on grids. I think that's kind of a unique capability that's really powerful. Um, so that's the easiest thing. Uh, th let me stop it now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to try to make the hi-hats add some variation to the hi-hats. So um, a way I like to do this is with uh, uh, using a Bernoulli gate, which is um, based on the mutable instruments uh, branches. So let me, let me wire this up here and then I'll explain how this works. So I'm gonna take the trigger output from my hi-hat and run it into the Bernoulli gate here and then run uh, one of these outputs on this gate to my hi-hat sample here, and then I'm going to run the other output to my other track here. Uh, what I have set up on the fourth uh, track on my Drum Player Plus is the exact same hi-hat sample um, as track number three, but the the playback speed is... Um, is set a little bit differently, so it adds a bit of a different sound to it because it pitches it up. Um, the the pitch the pitch of the playback is a little bit different, um, so you basically get kind of like two different hi hat sounds, but it's based on the same sample. Um, I'll move this output over here because the the output of track three is going to be normal to track four, so you'll, you'll hear uh, both samples playback <laughs> um, regardless of which one's triggered. And the way the Bernoulli gate works is um, when I have it set here in the 50% position, there's going to be a 50% probability that this trigger either routes its trigger to output A and 50% probability that it routes it to output B. Um, so you know, get this going again. And let me solo the hi-hats. This will be a little bit... Uh, It'll be kind of obvious how this works. So there's like a 50-50 chance that each of each hi-hat sample getting played, and I can weight the probability in one direction. Like if I go this way, it's um, my original hi-hat sample is playing 100% of the time. If I turn my knob all the way over there, my new hi-hat sample is playing. So now... So now it's um, because I have two different samples playing. You know, it kind of seems you know, it seems a little bit more alive to me. Um, and you can of course further modulate the sound of this with LFOs on the CV inputs of speed or something to try to like add even more variation to that. But I'm kind of good with the way that it is now. So. 
the accents and the hi-hats, I mean, that adds variation to the sound. I think the next thing I'm gonna do, though, is um, add some variation to the drum pattern. And this is where the clock will come into play. Uh, let me stop that and let me route my, uh, let me route the clock to, oops. Let me use an external clock here. And uh, let me wire up run and reset to my clock so I can use Oh, uh, yeah, I need to, yep, same tempo as before, but that's a four, four pulse per quarter note is how I have that set up, so I have to use my times four clock multiplier. All right, cool. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is take the divided by four output from my clock divider, bring it into my attenuverter here, and then take the output of that to my hi-hat pattern. And then maybe turn this up a bit. So you kind of have to see how when this uh, pulse from this clock divider is active, it's going to add some um, CV to the hi-hat fill here and then kind of add some um, Add some variation to the hi-hat pattern throughout the groove here. So that's a, an interesting way to use clock dividers on these filled knobs to, to um, add some variation to your drum line here. So the next thing I'm going to do, there's still not really any fills in my drum pattern or anything. So I think the next thing I'll do is take a... Uh, sequential switch and the one I like is my the 8 to 1 here from um, ML modules I think this one's pretty good and then I'll take the divided by 2 clock here from my clock divider and add that to up let me map reset to my clocked reset and so now you can see, based on how this light's moving, um, kind of every, uh, let's say, um, divided by two clock step, which is every, uh, my brain doesn't work, I think every half note or something, <laughs> it's kind of um, moving from one step to the next one. Um, and then I'm, what I'm gonna do is take uh, the output from my attenuverter here and map that to the eighth step and then take the output of my sequential switch and map that to my snare drum fill so basically when it gets to step eight um, once i adjust my attenuverter properly it'll um add like a snare drum fill to to this step here so maybe let me turn that up and see how this works Let's listen to that again. That's kind of cool. Maybe I'll add a bit. Let me move that down here. And then we add another one to step four. It needs a little bit more than that. Play with the groove a little bit. That's pretty neat. Yeah, so that's an easy way to use um, the topograph modules with a clock and some sequential switches and some uh, attenuverters to make interesting drum patterns pretty quickly. And again, like, I find this a lot more fun and to play with because you're just kind of like twisting knobs and listening to feedback versus like taking um, 
you know, a grid sequencer or something and try to try to draw your own drum patterns. This is a much quicker and easier method that can get you uh, an interesting drum pattern relatively quickly. And one other feature that um, I think I should mention is my the chaos knob down here. Uh, so this will add some random variation to your drum pattern, but it's not always uh, it's not always the most musical. <laughs> but if you turn it all the way up momentarily, it can add some like random fills throughout the drum pattern. But it's kind of chaotic and unpredictable, which maybe sometimes what you want, like if you have a break in your uh, performance or something and you want to fill it up with drum, you know, random drum fills, it's kind of neat. Uh, or you can have it on a somewhat lower setting and it'll be, um, the fills will be somewhat less dense and somewhat less frequent. So hope this was useful. Hope this was um, gives you some ideas on how you can adapt to the workflow and, and modular synthesis or VCV rack and put together things um, you know more quickly and easily using the tools that are built in. So thanks for watching. <laughs>